What's up, y'all? It's GC Kinsey, here with something a little different. A look at the beautiful butterflies who come to visit me every year and the important reminders they bring about trans joy. I have a pollinator garden in my yard, which I started in the fall of 2018 and expanded in the spring of 2023. And every year when the weather turns warm and the flowers start to bloom, it attracts all kinds of fun visitors, including bees, dragonflies, and of course, butterflies. One of the plants I grow is called milkweed, which plays a major role in the lives of monarch butterflies. They lay their eggs on its leaves, so when the baby caterpillars hatch, they have an immediate source of food. And once those caterpillars have gone through their metamorphosis, the adult butterflies drink the nectar from the milkweed's flowers before they fly away. I've watched the migratory generation of monarchs, the ones who fly from their breeding grounds in the US and Canada to spend the winter in the forests of central Mexico for several years now, as they hatch from their eggs on my milkweed, build their chrysalises on and around my front porch, and emerge in all their orange and black winged glory to pollinate my flowers before taking off for the skies. And every time, it's an absolute delight. In the fall of 2022, I was lucky enough to witness a monarch caterpillar forming a chrysalis, and another chrysalis opening up to let out the butterfly inside. I filmed both of those events, and I'm going to share that footage with you now, while I talk about the ways that these majestic butterflies' transformations remind me of my own. First of all, whether we're talking about metamorphosis or transition, and really, aren't those just two different words for the same thing? Whatever you want to call it, it's not an easy process. Before a butterfly becomes a butterfly, it starts as an egg, just like trans people do. When our eggs crack, when we realize that we're trans, that's when we can start to grow into our own and figure out what we want out of our transitions. Just like a caterpillar that hatches out of its egg can then start to grow until it's big enough to form a chrysalis. I spent my growth period changing the way I dressed and styled myself, experimenting with pronouns until I landed on the right ones, figuring out what signals to send to make my true self visible to others, learning what would make me happy, becoming stronger every step of the way. But that was only the beginning, because as you can see, once a caterpillar finishes growing, forming a chrysalis takes a lot of hard work. If you ever see a monarch caterpillar hanging upside down in the shape of a letter J, the way this caterpillar was at the start of this video, that's when you know it's about to go into the chrysalis stage, which it does by shedding its final layer of skin to reveal the new shell that will house it while it transforms into a butterfly. I think of the chrysalis stage like that in-between stage a lot of trans people go through until we reach our final form, whatever that may look like. Our final forms and the time we spend in our chrysalises getting there are all different. I'm still in my own chrysalis at the time I'm recording and posting this, and so far, that's involved taking testosterone, laying the groundwork for gender-affirming surgery, updating my accounts and records with various businesses and healthcare providers to specify that I now go by he-him pronouns and my initials instead of my full name, focusing extra hard on voice training, settling further into my sense of style. Most trans people would probably agree that the in-between stage, the chrysalis stage, is awkward. For those of us on hormones, it's literally puberty, and, well, we all know how awkward puberty is. But alongside the awkwardness, I am finding so much joy in my current puberty too. Joy I didn't have when I went through my first one. I feel it every time I sing, and I can actually hit low notes that my adolescent self could only dream about. I feel it every time I swim and notice how much stronger my arms are. I feel it every time I see my face in the mirror and catch a glimpse of my little 12-year-old boy dirt stash. Most of all, I feel it when I'm with my friends, my chosen family, because they affirm that these changes that are making me so happy aren't just all in my head. When they let me know that they can see me becoming the person I'm meant to be, that makes it so much more real. I may still have a ways to go before I get there, but I have tangible evidence that I'm getting a little bit closer to it every single day. And I know that, much like that caterpillar in its chrysalis, I just have to be patient. 
I'm in it to win it now. Even though the chrysalis is a stage of metamorphosis, it has its own mini stages too, milestones if you will, just like we do with our transitions. When the caterpillar sheds its skin and exposes the shell of the chrysalis, that shell is soft. It needs a day or two to harden enough to keep the transforming butterfly inside safe. The chrysalis you see here is in its softest and most vulnerable state, newly formed, waiting for that hardening process to happen. Just like many trans people are when we are in the earliest stages of transitioning or coming out. We have to learn, either relearn or learn for the first time, how to harden our exteriors against a world that doesn't understand us and can therefore be cruel, all without losing the softness inside. And that's what happens inside the chrysalis too, literally. The caterpillar digests its own body, which causes it to more or less liquefy and reform its tissues into the body of a butterfly. So within the hardened outer shell of that chrysalis, the transforming butterfly is as soft as it can possibly be. The transformation process usually takes a couple of weeks, and you can tell it's almost done when the butterfly's wings gain pigment and become visible through the outer shell of the chrysalis. That's the last milestone of the chrysalis stage, the moment when you can tell the butterfly's new body is fully formed and it's just about ready to come out. Our transition journeys are a lot longer and oftentimes a lot less linear than a butterfly's transformation inside the chrysalis. But even so, our hope is that we'll one day reach that point where we've achieved our goals and arrived at the form we wanted to take. And then we can emerge into the world as our truest selves. Maybe that means coming out as trans. Maybe it means starting a whole new life around new people who never knew you before and not coming out as trans, but just existing as your true self. Maybe it means you were already out as trans or questioning your gender, and now you can finally show everyone the vision you had for yourself all along. Whatever that looks like for you will be unique to your circumstances and who you are as a person. In the stages of butterfly metamorphosis, coming out of the chrysalis is called eclosing, and while it may look like hatching, it's different. Hatching is when you come out of your egg as a baby caterpillar, just beginning your metamorphosis, but eclosing is when you come out of your chrysalis as a fully formed adult butterfly, metamorphosis finally complete and ready to take on the next journey of your life. When the ridges at the top of a monarch chrysalis with visible butterfly wings inside start to expand, that's when you know the butterfly will eclose within the next hour. And once it does, then there's only one thing left for it to do. Make sure it's ready to fly. The moment the butterfly eclosses, its abdomen is full of fluid, which it pumps into its wings to expand them to their full size. Once that's done, it expels all the remaining liquid waste from its body, and then it spends a few hours hanging out to dry. That time is critical, because if anything interrupts it, if the butterfly doesn't have enough room to hang, or if the weather isn't suitable for letting its wings dry, that might make flying away impossible. So even though the eclosing phase of metamorphosis might look like the one where the butterfly is the strongest, where it's a fully grown adult in its final form, that's actually one of its most vulnerable times as well, which is similar to the final stages of transition. Maybe that's when you're healing from surgery, or finalizing your legal documents with your correct name and gender marker, or leaving your last job as the person you were pretending to be and starting your first one as your true self. It can be a time of celebration as you achieve your final goals, and a time of instability as you take your first steps into a new life. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Alongside that instability and vulnerability, there's so much beauty and power and euphoria and happiness. And I think that might be one of the reasons I love watching butterflies so much. If their metamorphosis is like transition, then the outcome represents trans joy. And that's something I think all trans people could use a little more of in our lives. So often the trans experience is framed according to the struggles, the hardships, the dysphoria we feel, the discrimination we face, the pain we go through to get to where we want to be, and trans joy ends up left to fall by the wayside, forgotten. 
which is why I hold on to it so tightly in whatever ways I can. There's no denying that the struggle is real, but the joy is real too. And no matter how hard it can be to find that joy sometimes, no matter how hard others may try to take it away from us, it's important. After all, is there any joy more powerful than living an unapologetically authentic life, especially in a world that profits from making you feel like your true self will never be good enough or shouldn't exist in the first place? I prioritize that joy and the power it brings me. I've let my gender euphoria drive every aspect of my transition, both physical and social, and it's never steered me wrong yet. I take a moment to appreciate and celebrate every little thing that makes my joy grow bigger and brighter. And every time I see a butterfly going through metamorphosis and then finally taking flight, I feel a spark of that trans joy in my heart. To my siblings in the trans and non-binary community, I hope you know how much your joy matters. I hope that regardless of how hard your life is in other ways, you can still find and experience that joy and hold on to it. And I hope that you have something that reminds you of that joy, just like the butterflies in my pollinator garden do for me. To all of you watching, whether you're trans or not, I really appreciate it. Your support means a lot to me. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll stick around on my channel for more. I've got a series of vlogs about my experiences as a queer person, along with cosplay music videos, makeup tutorials, pre and post testosterone voice recordings, all kinds of things. So make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss anything new. If you want to reach out to me, I'm GC Kinsey across all platforms. Thank you again for being here. I wish you all the joy in the world. Happy Pride Month. And I will see you on the next one.